for all of the previous models, the unit cell has been bordered by the 100, 010, and 001 planes, where the numbers refer to the Miller indices. For example, in this particular crystal structure for fluorite. In this episode, we're going to look at several models that more clearly demonstrate the 110 and related planes. Simple cubic, cubic primitive, 110, is this particular model. We notice that the exposed face has a rectangular rather than square arrangement of atoms. Because of this, reactions will proceed differently on this face than on the square 100 face. We can distinguish two types of reactive sites. The first is the on top position. So there we'd have absorption comes directly down on top of one of these surface atoms. For the second type, an absorbing molecule binds between two of the surface atoms, say between here and here, or between here and here. In those particular cases, we call those bridging sites. And we see for this particular crystal that there are two possible bridging sites, this one, and this one, and that they're distinct because the two lengths are different because we have a rectangle. Here we have the body centered cubic 110 face. For this face, the exposed atoms form a rectangle, see the rectangle, but with a, another atom directly in the center of the rectangle. This is the atom that would have previously been considered to be in the body position. So if we rearrange the model, we can more clearly see how this is related to the body center cubic structure with which we are familiar. So let's turn it around. If we arrange it like this, we can see that these positions here, there, 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 and there, would previously have been considered our vertices. If we turn it very slightly, we can see that this particular atom in there is actually in the body position. So if we tilt it this way, we can kind of get a better appreciation for how the 110 face of the body center cubic structure comes about. Here we have two adjacent models of the cesium chloride 110 face. For this particular face, the exposed atoms of one element form the rectangle. So we might imagine that these are the chlorine or chloride ions. And there was an atom of a different element directly in the center of the rectangle. And this might be considered to be the cesium atom. And in this particular model, it's made larger for the fact that cesium uh, ion is a very large ion. This is the atom that would have previously been considered to be in the body position in our traditional 100 style cesium chloride molecule. So we notice now that we have, rather than having only one element exposed on the surface, we have two different elements. So this will vastly change the reactivity of this particular crystal. Here we have several models of the face centered cubic 110 face. We notice in a sense that it resembles body centered cubic, except that the exposed face is rectangular and not square. And when we say that it resembles body center cubic, we mean body center cubic 100 face. Um, so here for this particular face, we can distinguish three types of binding sites for adsorbing molecules. 
So we still have the on type site on top sites. So a particular absorbing molecule might come down and bind directly uh, on top of an atom here. Um, we have two different types of bridging sites. So we have a bridging site, for example, here between these two atoms or between these two. And since the lengths are different, we can distinguish the reactivity of those sites and the reactivity should be different. And we have a third type, which is called the hollow site. So this molecule actually makes it quite clear that we see that we have atoms right here that are recessed slightly below the level of this particular surface. These particular locations are called hollow sites. And in fact, for many types of reactions, not only on face center cubic 110, but on face center cubic and body center cubic 100, the hollow site is very often the preferred binding site, not only for binding and for catalysis. So it's a useful thing of this particular um, model that we can clearly see the various binding sites um, on this particular face. One additional feature in the design of this particular model for the face centered cubic 110 face is that we can break apart the model, we can open it up, and this actually displays quite nicely a mirror plane. So we actually see that there is a mirror plane that passes through the hollow sites and will reflect the exposed surface to one of the bulk surfaces, bulk layers um, below it. So one of the nice features of this, it actually demonstrates that particular symmetry operation dynamically. Last, but certainly not least, we have models of the 110 face of AUCU3. So this is an intermetallic compound between gold and copper. And we notice that it superficially at least resembles the 110 face of the face centered cubic. Um, so we know, for example, that we have on type sites, but we have two different types of on type sites because we can come down on either gold or copper. And we also notice that we have uh, distinct bridging sites. So along here is one of the bridging sites and another bridging site. And in we have the third possible type of site is the hollow. And we know this in all the cases here, the hollow in every case is copper. So the copper is the sort of brown, the gold is the orange. You'll notice that there's a slight difference in shading between the orange here and the orange there. There is no great significance to that. That is just what happens when you uh, make a model using a printer cartridge that is very near the end. It starts to look like that. And this is more of the, uh, the color that you get when you use a brand new cartridge. So. Um, don't read anything into that beyond that's what real life is like. But we see that, that we have, since we have two different elements, again, exposed to the surface, we can imagine that we have a much more complicated uh, series of possibilities of, for both absorption of molecules and for possible uh, mechanisms for catalysis. So as we get more and more complicated crystal structures, we notice that to build the models of the 110 face, they become increasingly complex, but also increasingly more interesting. Again, in a similar sense to the FCC 110 models, we notice that this model also will break apart in the center uh, along the hollow atoms. And we can see that we can uh, represent a mirror plane here also. So we see that this particular Atom here is mirrored into the top. So this actually is a true mirror plane. For some of the models, we have this particular arrangement because it also makes it easier to construct a level that's halfway in between this edge and that edge. So it's also an even easy way to, um, to make the models, but it's usually intended to demonstrate a mirror plane.